Hello everyone, welcome back to Andrina's Creations. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to design your own Grinchmas Eve box. It is very popular at the moment for many years. It has been, so I'm going to teach you how. So for your supplies, you're going to need a gift box or a box of choice. The ones that people are using right now are 8x8, 6x6x4, a printer, printing paper of its choice such as sticker paper, cardstock, or photo paper. Make sure that the paper that you are using is compatible with your printer. Your next step is to measure the box that you're going to be using. I love this fractions measuring tape. I'll leave the link down below for this measuring tape and I'll leave the link down below for the box as well. Now keep in mind, you do not have to use these boxes. You can use any box of your choice. There's many boxes out there like even in $1.25 store. So go ahead and get any box. You can even get a big shipping box and decorate it as you please. This is all up to you how you want the boxes to be. Now again, like I said, go ahead and measure the, all the size, the top and the sides the top the size wherever you want to put a label on and you're going to enter those measurements into the software of your choice i'm going to be using silhouette studio i have silhouette studio business edition this software is amazing you can use the basic edition for free i'll leave the link down below but if you do want to use business edition it is a one-time payment and you can use it up to three devices you do not need a cutting machine to use this software and honestly today we are not even going to use the cutting machine because after i design i'm just going to print it and i'm going to cut it out by hand with a pair with a pair of scissors all right, so again, I have Silhouette Business Edition version 4.4. Why do I recommend Business Edition? Is because you have all the icons. You are able to use all the icons in the software. Again, I have a whole playlist on how to use this software. But if you don't want to use the software, you can use any other software such as Photoshop, Inkscape, uh, Microsoft Word, Publisher, and so on. It's totally up to you what software you use. It's going to be all the same thing. All you have to do is enter the measurement exactly of the box that you are going to be using for today i'm going to be using the 8 by 8 by 4 box from amazon so when i measured it is exactly 8 by 8 but i want to leave it uh it's 8 by 4 but i do want to leave it some wiggle room so you're going to go ahead and get a square so it's all my shapes are here on my left i'm going to grab the square and i'm going to make any size square on my screen here it doesn't matter the size as of yet while my square is selected, I'm actually going to go here to my right to the fill icon and I'm going to color it white so you're able to see it here on the screen. And also right now, if you look closely, it has a red outline. I'm going to go ahead and remove that red outline because I do not like to see that. So under my fill icon is the outline color. I'm going to click on it, well, the color option, and I'm going to click on no color. Again, like I said, when I measured my box, it was around 8x8, eight eight, the top, and then the sides were 8x4. But I wanted to give some wiggle room. So up here, while my square is still selected, on my width, I'm going to type 7.87 and enter. And now these are the measurements that I'm going to be using, but you can use any measurements of your choice. And on my height, I'm going to use 7.87. And this is for the top of the box. Now, if you do want to put a label on the sides, uh, you're going to go ahead, duplicate this square and the, the width is going to change. So I'm going to change my width to 3.87. From here, and sorry, not my width, my height. 3.87 now you're going to decide how many labels you want to add to your box i am going to have three because i want to cover i'm sorry four i'm going to actually cover all my sides and on the top lid i'm going to put one on the top of the lid and i'm actually going to put one in the inside of the box so i'm going to need two of these and four of here now you're ready to start designing however you want you're going to go ahead and grab your patterns, your images, and stuff like that. Now, I am affiliated with Creative Fabrica, and I am going to go ahead and download some digital paper. So, I'm going to be using this one. It's the Christmas digital paper. Like I said, I am affiliated with Creative Fabrica. So, if you want to try them out, for the first month, you will only pay $1. And after that month, you will only pay $19 a month. You do not need to become a member to purchase anything for Creative Fabrica. You will just purchase everything individually. Why do I recommend the membership? It's because you can go ahead and download as much as you want every day, forever, as long as you're a member. And there's millions of stuff from here that you can 
can download, such as clip arts, PNG, sublimation stuff, digital paper, and so on. All right, so like I said, I'm going to be using this digital paper. I'm also going to be using this gold glitter stars overlay, and I'm going to be using this that says do not open until the 24th of December. Like I said, all you have to do is click on download. Once you download, you're going to extract the folder and save it into your laptop or desktop. Okay, my images, I went on to Etsy and I purchased this bundle. So if you want to uh, use the same ones that I'm using today, you don't have to. But I do like these images and it's from this seller, Karam Karamfilas, I think if I'm not mistaken. But it's $7.69 and it brings a lot of clip arts um, in here as you can see. But these are the ones that I'm going to be using. All right, once I download everything and save everything to my laptop, I'm going to go back into Silhouette. And because I already have everything that I just um, saved it into my laptop, there is two different ways on how to bring in your stuff into Silhouette. First is File and Merge. And then you're going to locate the folder wherever you save your stuff of, wherever you save your stuff at. Or you can go down here to your quick access folder and access the folder you save everything. I have a Christmas folder that I have saved everything into. And I'm just going to go ahead and locate everything that I need. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and drag it into Silhouette. And go ahead and do that with everything that you want to use. So I'm going to go and keep adding everything that I'm going to use. Okay, so one thing about Silhouette is that you do not have to design everything here in the canvas. You can put everything all around and then once you are ready to print or cut, then you're going to transfer everything to the canvas. So as you can see, I have everything all around my gray area. So let's start with the first one, which will be my front of the box or the top of the box, right? So right here is the zoom in and the zoom out button, which are these magnifying glass right here that you can see. So I'm going to zoom out and let me start, like I said, with the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this background over here. Okay, so there is two different ways on how to put an image or a pattern into your shape. If you have basic edition, all you have to do is right click and send your design to the back. And then you're going to go ahead and bring it to the back of your shape and make it as big as you want but make sure that your shape is actually getting covered you're going to click here on your screen select the both you're going to go here to your right to your modify icon and then you're going to click on crop and that's it the second way that you will bring a pattern in let me right click and duplicate it if you have business edition you have right here what is called a property dropper all the way on your left so I'm going to click on my shape. I'm going to click on my property dropper and I'm going to click inside of my pattern and this right there. And that's it. So that's the two different ways you can either crop or use your property dropper. You can only use your property dropper if you have a business edition. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to select my square and I'm going to go here to my offset icon. Looks like a double star. Then I'm going to click on internal offset and I'm going to go up just a bit. Like I said, all this right here is optional. Now you're going to start designing these however you would like. And then I'm going to go here to my fill icon and click on the color white and change the outline color to none. And this is how it's looking right now. Then go ahead and start adding your design or your clip arts. As you can see, once you bring in a PNG image into Solo Studio, it automatically gets traced. So you'll see that red outline. I do not like to see that red outline on my stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to start adding my clip arts to my square.
Okay, I also got this font from Creative Fabrica. It's called the Grinch 2.0. Now, whenever you download any fonts to your laptop and you are going to be using Silhouette Studio, Silhouette Studio must be completely closed. After um, you have downloaded the font, then you are going to go ahead and reopen Silhouette Studio and all your fonts should be right here. And how do you type in Silhouette is you're going to click on the A on your left, then A on your right. Then you're going to go ahead and just select the font that you want to use and click somewhere on your screen and start typing. Once you're done typing, go ahead and click somewhere on your screen to get off the edit mode. And then you're going to select your um, font again and go to your fill icon and go ahead and color it the color that you would like it to be. If you don't like any of these colors, you can click on the dropper right here in your fill icon and bring your dropper over here and select any color that you would like from your actual image that you are designing. As you can see, this one has the red outline that I do not like. I'm going to go here to my outline color and take that outline color off. I'm going to go back to the fill icon and I'm actually going to color this in a color red. I'm going to go ahead and right click and duplicate this and I'm going to color it the green color. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to overlap these two together. Okay, once I like how they both look, I'm going to click here on my screen and I'm going to drag to select both and I'm going to right click and group them together. So now I'm left like this, then I'm going to go ahead and add it to wherever I want this to be. All right, once I like that one, I'm just going to go ahead and select this one, right click and duplicate it. This is the one that's going to go inside of the box. And then I'm going to go ahead and design this one. And I'm going to go ahead and design all the rest. And then I'll be right back as soon as I'm done designing. All you got to do is keep on adding your design. Keep on adding your text on however you want like them to look. And then I'm going to show you how I design mine. All right, once you're done designing, depending on what background you use for the back, now me, because these borders are kind of light and I am going to be cutting out by hand, I want the back to be kind of visible. Um, so all I'm going to have to do is click on the back of my box, the back one, make sure nothing is grouped. I'm going to click on the back one and I'm going to change the outline color to a light color that I'm able to see when I'm about to um, cut it out. Now, if you click right here on the first option of your line style, it's going to say thickness zero. You need to bring that up. So because if you leave it on zero, once you print, that is not going to be visible for you to be able to see it. So make sure the thickness is at least on 0 0.25. Then I'm going to select everything that I have designed there and I'm going to right click and group it together. Once everything is grouped, you're going to go here to your first icon that, is the, that looks like a piece of paper. That is your page setup. On your media size, you're going to change that to the paper that you are going to be, the size of paper that you're going to be using. I'm going to be using 8x11 sticker paper, so I need to make sure that the media size is on 8x11. I'm going to click on my design, and I'm going to go here to my transform icon, and I'm going to click on center just so I can center it right here on my media size. After I have it here, I'm going to go here to my printer icon. I'm going to click on print. I'm going to choose my Canon Pro 200. If you have watched my previous tutorials, I always say I have an Epson Ecotank 16600. But because I am going to be using glossy sticker paper, I am going to be using my Canon. I just love the print that this Canon gives for my glossy paper. It, it doesn't compare to the Epson one when it comes to the glossy. But anyways, I'm going to use my Canon Pro 200. I'm going to click on preferences. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's on 8x11 as well. I'm going to choose the photo paper Pro Platinum. I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and print. After I print this out, I'm going to go ahead and manually cut all my papers out 
out. Like I said, I'm not going to be using my uh, machine to cut them out. I'm going to use my scissors. But if you do not want to cut it out by hand, you're going to have to turn on your registration marks right here. And this is the reason why I'm not cutting it with the machine. Because if I am using 8x11 paper, it's just too big for an actual cameo to cut it out. So I'm just going to go with a pair of scissors, okay? So once I print this one out, I'm going to repeat the same steps for all of them. I'm going to be using four sticker papers because these big ones fit on one sheet and the two side ones fit two in a sheet okay so go ahead and turn off your registration marks go ahead and print it out and cut it out and then we'll be right back Okay, after I cut out all the paper, I am going to actually open this box flat. Now, it depends on the box that you're using because if, if you didn't get this box and you got something else, you're not going to be able to open the box flat. But I'm open the box flat so it's easier for me to uh, put the paper on. And like I said, I am using sticker paper. You don't have to use sticker paper. You can use cardstock, photo paper, and then just use regular glue or double-sided tape. After you add all the pieces where they got to go, you're basically done. Remember to check down the description box. I am going to be leaving all the links down below of the box and the sticker paper that I'm going to be using. Now remember to make sure that the paper you're going to be using is compatible with your printer. This sticker paper works best with dye ink, not with pigment ink. Now my Epson is pigment ink, but my Canon printer is dye ink. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to comment down below any other videos you would like to see from me. If you are new here, guys, don't forget to subscribe and click on notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. Don't forget to go ahead and join my free Facebook group. It's called Angina's Creations Crafting Lounge. I would love to see you guys over there. Follow me on all my social medias. All my handles are Angina's Creations LLC. And like I said, I did use the bigger box and you could fit a lot of goodies in here, but you can use any other box. And don't forget that these boxes can be made for any occasion not only for christmas so valentine's is around the corner you can use them for birthdays and so on all right guys i hope everyone's having a blessed day and i'll talk to you guys later bye bye